Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Ninja Chickens channel. I am back in my office again today with a little bit more around me and hopefully not so much echo. A lot has been happening in the last couple of weeks, so I've got lots to catch up with you about. Today we're going to wrap up some knit-alongs and giveaways, chat about knitting, and uh, go over some things that have been happening here in Asheville and in my world. So welcome. It's really nice to have you all back. And for those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. It's nice to have you. So my name is Maria and I'm living in Asheville, just outside of Asheville with my family on a little homestead. And I love crafty things. <laughs> Not all crafty things, I guess. Fibery related crafty things mostly. So you can find me on Instagram as ninja.chickens with a little dot in the middle. You can find me on Ravelry as Ninja Chickens and all the show notes and podcast information, store information, all of that is on ninjachickens.org. So I hope you're starting your Thursday morning out wonderfully. Hopefully you don't hear too much in the background. It is pouring rain outside. This is the fourth day of rain for us here in Asheville and in my new little studio, we have a tin roof, so you might hear some rain on the tin roof. Um, I also have my Ent friend here. I was looking in the computer, uh, setting up the camera and realized it looks like there's an Ent back there. Do you guys know what Ent is? The, the, um, the tree people from the Tolkien series, the Lord of the Rings series. I just think it looks like he's standing out there, hanging out by the window. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Let's wrap up some of the giveaway stuff because I know a lot of you are um, awaiting some of that. So the first thing was last year, last year, last episode, I had announced a bag giveaway from Bags by Awesome Granny. And um, I've been using the one that she sent me, which I absolutely love. It's books, but they also look like they're gilded in some areas, like they've got gold on them. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but... I don't know, it just makes me think of a, of a fancy library, and I like libraries. Um, so, yes, I had asked for you guys on Instagram to tell me a favorite memory from someone who's passed. It was um, the Day of the Dead when I posted it, or Halloween when I posted it. And I can't tell you how amazing it was to read those posts. If you have not gone and read them, it was on Instagram. It's the post that shows this bag. It's maybe six or seven posts back. And there were so many of you who were willing to share a memory with me of someone that meant something to you who had passed. And it was really, really amazing and very touching. And it made me remember some other things that had happened with my father that I'd forgotten about. Um, so I really loved it. And and thank you very, very much. It touched my heart and just made me smile. So I really appreciate it. I seriously think you should go back and read some of those if you haven't read them because it just, I don't know, I think it'll brighten your day. So the winner of that, I pulled, um, I pulled a name from a random, uh, random number generator from all of the people who left comments. And the winner was No Yarn Barf on Instagram and she's already been contacted. Thank you all so much. Um, bags by Awesome Granny is still offering an open 15% off of any of her bags. So if you type in Ninja 15 at checkout, you'll get 15% off. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, another giveaway that ended or a knit along that ended was the uh, sweater knit along for Rhinebeck. Um, for those of you who weren't able to go and participated in the Not Everybody Gets to Go to Rhinebeck virtual festival, we also had a sweater knit along and the winner that I drew, well, there were many different vendors who were offering prizes for that and each drew their own prizes and the winner for that, which was um, tea and a soft blank, was No Scrubs 58, who is Carrie and she knit a fern and feather sweater, which was really beautiful. And I'll show you that right here. And she's also been contacted. So congratulations, Carrie. And the last knit along giveaway that we have going on that also has wrapped up is from episode number 40, where I had asked you all to participate by knitting 
at least one five by five square to donate to the Sister Survivor Blanket Project. And I'm happy to announce that we sent 97 squares off to Evelyn to add to the blanket. So she has a total of 245 squares, which more than completes the blanket that she wanted to knit for, um, for this particular woman and leaves her 100 more squares to make a smaller one for another survivor. So thank you all so much. It was really amazing to pack up all those squares and send them off. And um, she has a video up of her going through all the squares. I think her latest video, Evel of, of the Thistle Hollow. And you can go back and see all of that. So that I have not drawn yet because I thought it would be fun to draw on here. So we had a knitter's package and a spinner's package and nobody entered for the kids package so I will save some of that stuff for next time. Um, this is the spinner's basket so here you all are. I'm just gonna reach in and grab one and it is Zira who is love of the dark in On Ravelry. I will be in contact with you about your spinner's package. Congratulations! And for the knitters, sorry for all the crinkling. All right, reach in and grab one, and it is Marissa or Arissa Dawn 75 on Ravelry. Congratulations, you two. Thank you all so much for everything that you gave to that project. I can't wait to see the finished blankets, and I will make sure to put pictures up here when they are done. So, let me make sure that's everything. I think that's all for the, um, for the winners and the knit-alongs and all of that stuff. So I want to get into a little bit of knitting and what I've been up to in fiber, and then I have a story about ginkgo and turmeric to tell you, um, and about the apple cider donut tea. So I'll save those till the end, and there's some really cool video coming up. So let's see, finished objects. The first thing I wanted to show you is the Ciron Mittens by Scan Your Knits. This was her November uh, Mitten Club mitten and I test knit, test knit this for her a few months back and I love them. She, so Ellie makes a really nice pattern, first of all. There's not too much fluff, so you don't have to sift through all the things to figure out what you need and it's straightforward and tells you exactly what you need. And it's, I feel like, a pretty easy pattern to follow whether you're a beginner or an advanced knitter. And with the way she's been doing her, her mitten club is starting, this is her second year of it, and the first pattern is with a larger yarn and a fairly simple pattern. And then it kind of builds up to smaller weight yarn and more detailed patterns. So she has one more that's coming out in December. But this is her November mitt. And I did this one first with the blue as the background color. And I really like it. I like the, the, the flower. It looks like a flower made of hearts. And then I switched them for the next one with the light blue or the, the pale blue as the background color. And I really love how they look together. So there it is. I, I use the Rauma Fenul and the Uridale Organic Native Shetland yarns. And I have all the details about it in my Ravelry page. I don't think I altered anything. I did it just as it was called for. And it went super fast because, you know, there, there's not any long floats. Everything, you just keep wanting going, you just keep wanting to go around and around to get to the next part of the pattern. So yeah, there they are. And I think they're lovely. Thank you, Ellie, for giving me a chance to test knit these. They were a lot of fun. My next finished object you saw mostly finished last time, and those are the serious socks. And here they are. This was a pattern that I came up with, and there is a knit-along going on right now through December 21st. If you want to join, it's in the Ravelry group, all the details. On the first one, you can see I started the toe with 
let's see, I started the toe with an orange in the center, and I just didn't like the way it was popping, so I did white instead, and I did the whole sock like that for this one. And it's, I feel like it's a fast knit because you have a section of this that you want to finish, then a section of that, and you just keep on going. The heel is a lot of fun, I think, because I know the afterthought heel doesn't fit me very well, and I'll tell you about that in just a second. But I also don't like knitting a flap and then having to attach it or pick up stitches as I go. So I really enjoyed doing this one where you create the gusset, you have some short rows to turn your heel, and then you do decreases going up. Um, and there's also some slip stitches to give it a little bit of texture. So yeah, I really like this pattern. Um, and I'm excited to, to wear these now. This is a, a Romney wool that's dyed with matter, the red. So it's a nice sturdy sock. And I think that's all I have to say about that one. Um, oh, the, so the, the yarn, these yarns are just scraps. I think actually two of them were yarn, the Uridale and the, and the Rauma yarns. You can see those colors here. But the rest of them were just scraps that I had in stash, little pieces left over from other things. This one is a yarn that's no longer available. I just had it in stash from Fern Fiber. Um, but any fingering weight uh, Romney yarn would be a really nice yarn to substitute for that. And the last work or finished object that I have are an, is another test knit, and this one was for Mars of Hay Brown Berry, and it is her first published pattern, and it's her Pebbles and Pathway socks. And that's these, and I love them. If you are to look at it straight on, you see what looks like a path, basically. Twists and turns, all the twists and turns that we have in life. <laughs> um, so there's no pattern on the back, and then you can add the pattern, or on the, on the foot, and you can add the pattern for the back if you want. Originally, I did this, we, she was thinking of having a, an afterthought heel, and so that's how I started knitting it. In the final pattern, which I believe comes out this Sunday the 18th, which is Mars's birthday, there is a, um, a gusset heel that she designed to put in there, and links to an afterthought if you decide to do that. So, because I wanted to try the afterthought with her pattern, what I did was I knit the whole tube, leaving a, I guess it's called a forethought if you know where you're gonna put it, but basically a heel that I do after. And I left a, um, a waste, piece of waste yarn. I knit up to a certain point and then knit back and forth with a piece of waste yarn and picked back up my yarn and continued going. So I had this one section right here that I could cut out and put back on the needles. But the depth of the afterthought heels are never big enough for me. So what I did instead, if you can see it, is I added some short rows. So right here, you can see there's no decreases until here. So this is a section of short rows back and forth and back and forth, which adds some depth to the heel. And it fits perfectly. Can you see that little rainbow of short rows? Let's see if I can get it to focus a little better. And I love it. I think it was really simple. I found it on a website and I cannot find it again. Um, if I find it, I will let you know exactly where it is. But I tweaked it a little bit, wrote it on my notes, and then got rid of the website. Um, but I put those notes of exactly how I did it on the Ravelry page. So if you go to Ninja Chickens and you click on my projects, you'll see these. And you'll see the short row heel. It was super simple. Um, to add those short rows to the afterthought heel, I might start doing that again because I really like how it, how it came out and it fits well. One thing that I really enjoyed about Mars's pattern is, again, there's not a lot of fluff to sift through. It tells you what you need to know, but there's enough to that a beginning knitter could knit it just fine. But I, she puts in there these little pro tips, it says, it's all boxed out and says pro tip, and it tells you great ideas of how to change the pattern, how to alter it to fit your foot better, 
um, how you can change the look a little bit. And it's, it's, um, it's really great. For a first pattern, I think it's, she did a fabulous job. So keep your eyes out for that this Sunday. So I used for the main yarn, this pretty pink with some speckles here and there. And that is Rock and String Creations. And this is her Dirty Girl colorway and her Jitterbug fingering yarn, which is a superwash merino and nylon. And for the heel, I had a little mini that was given to me by Stranded Dye Works. And it says Oasis on here. It doesn't have, um, I don't know if it's the Oasis base or the Oasis colorway, but it's a fingering weight yarn and it feels like a fairly standard 80-20. And that's the color of it. There we go. So yeah, I love them now. I get to wear these. <laughs> That's the problem with not wanting to stretch them out or get them dirty before podcasting. I can't wear my finished objects. So that's it. Those are the three that I have done. Yeah, most of them were mostly done before the end of last podcast. What I've been working on since then, pretty much monogamously, is my cloak. So here is the cloak that I'm designing. It is in Harrisville designs yarn, the watershed yarn, and this is what we've got so far. It's kind of hard to see, but this is the center where it will be steeped, and then you can see the texture starting to come out, and the cables on either side. I put in a lifeline at a certain point where I wanted to make sure it was increasing the way I wanted to, so that's why you've got this white stripe through here, because I wanted to make sure it didn't increase at the wrong rate that would make it too skinny of a cloak or too wide of a cloak. I've done all the mathematic calculations, but just in case, I put in a lifeline. And I really like it. I like how this yarn is knitting. It feels good. It's a worsted weight, so I feel, I'm sorry, it's a, yes, it's a worsted weight, but a woolen spun. And so it's got more fluff and more air in it. I feel like once it's blocked, it's really going to fill out and become a a real squishy cloak and warm. So here's the cable coming down the front. So yeah, I'm getting there. I don't know how many stitches are on the needles right now, but I know once I get to the bottom of the cloak where it's going to be much wider, it's probably going to be at least 500. <laughs> so it may take me a while to get this done. Um, but it'll be a wardrobe staple and one of those that you just want to keep knitting on, right? <laughs> so you won't mind the 500 stitch rows that you could watch a whole movie through just getting around one row. We'll see how it goes. I'm excited about it and I like it so far. I'm still not sure if I'm going to put the color work at the bottom. Right now I'm thinking I am. I think it would be a nice break in, I mean, you'll have the texture and the cable down the front but I still think having some color work along the bottom would be nice. We'll see. I have to really block, um, swatch that out with some different colors as the background and make sure it fits and doesn't draw your attention too much just to the bottom of the cloak. So that's the only thing I'm working on. I really want to cast on something sparkly. <laughs> I'm in the mood to cast on, I think, some sparkly socks for the holidays. So I may do that just so that I have a little something else I can knit on when I don't feel like doing the cloak. So that's it. As far as the fiber related stuff, these past couple of weeks, it's been a lot of knitting. I haven't been doing any spinning or much dyeing. I did have a class at Local Cloth and that went fabulously. We all had a blast. The weather really didn't get chilly enough to knock all the leaves off till well, just the last week. So we still had a lot of leaves we could go out and collect for the class, which was really nice, and people seemed to enjoy themselves. So that was a lovely day. And, um, and obviously, I've put a little bit more into my cabin. Uh, the downstairs where we've put the ceiling on, I've done most of the painting. In two days, we'll put the flooring down and then I can start moving some stuff in. There's little touches here and there, like trim around the edges and, and you know, putting up the lights and stuff like that. But 
but it's getting really close. I'm hoping my neighbor will build the window seat and bookshelf that I want right over here on the window. He's an amazing carpenter and um, and I think that might be something that he would be interested in. So I'm going to ask him when he comes out to help with the flooring on Saturday. But yeah, I've been in here this past week working. We put in some heat. So um, I'm looking over here because there's a little bitty fireplace. So I'm able to stay warm and enjoy the rain when it falls these last four days and start claiming it. It's really cool. I love that. It just feels magical walking into the place and then having to climb this ladder because it's a it's a loft with a ladder upstairs and I have to climb up into my little workspace, which just feels like I'm climbing this secret tower ladder into a magical room. <laughs> that might sound stupid, but I've I've tried to make it feel I don't know, I tried to put everything in here that I could surround myself with to feel comfort and happiness. And and this is my passion stuff, you know? It's my yarn and my knitting and, and my spinning wheel and um, everything that makes me feel happy. So I'm really enjoying being in this space. And luckily, both kids are enjoying being in school, so I don't feel guilty when I drop them off in the mornings. Leaf is loving it. He's doing great. He's enjoying being with kids all day. He's enjoying learning from new teachers. And then he comes home and he tells me everything he learned about, and we look up more, and, you know, we can still do our own method of schooling after school and on the weekends and, and learn more if he wants to. And Kaya's really thriving, too. She's, she's found her people. She's in a community that is really supporting her and supporting each other and um, they're asking they're asking each other to they're asking themselves the teachers and the students to step up and and represent and it's been really cool to see everybody just you know blossoming so yeah that's been good um, <clears throat> one thing that Leaf and I did kind of school wise is at the end of last winter, so nine months ago or so, we found some turmeric root that was in the grocery store and it had some little sprouts sticking out of it. And for those of you who don't know turmeric, it's in the ginger family. It's uh, curcuma is another name. It's a scientific name. Curcuma longa, I think is the scientific name. And it's a really nice medicinal herb for inflammation. It's used a lot in in Indian cooking and Middle Eastern cooking, but it's it's been used more specifically in the States, it seems like, as an anti-inflammatory. A lot of people with arthritis or inflammatory joints or inflammatory conditions will use it. So we thought we would plant it. We thought we'd stick it some dirt and see what happened. It's a more tropical plant, so it's not something that would overwinter in our climate. So we put it in a pot and it took off. There were two little pieces. And we knew that we could probably bring it in the next winter because it grew, you know, gosh, a couple feet tall, long green leaves, looked almost like thin banana leaves. And we, once it was warm enough, we put it outside and let it grow out there through the summer and fall. And we knew that we'd have to take it back in if we wanted it to survive the winter, but we thought we'd harvest it and see what happened. And so I'll put in a little video of us digging it up and show you what that's like. We had a lot of fun digging through the roots and pulling out the turmeric. Do you wanna tell what this is? This is turmeric. It's turmeric. Yeah. How did you plant it? Um. I don't even remember. No, we got some turmeric from from the local store, right? And oh, yeah, it had some yeah. Yeah. some little sprouts on it and we just stuck it in the ground. Oh, I wanna do it. Well here. You gently gently squeeze it here. Here's a piece. How, how do you get it to do this? Just gently um dig. So we put two little pieces of turmeric in there and have been oh, growing I'm, it I'm since the spring. Place, Mm -hmm. And now that the winter's 
the winter weather's coming, it's time to dig it up. If we were in a tropical climate, then we could let it continue to grow, but it won't survive. Here, let's do. Oh, wow. I want to break this off. And here is some of the roots that we got. This is only a small part of it. Some of it we're going to shred and put in little ice cube trays and then freeze it. So we have a small amount for cooking or if we want to throw it in a drink. And then some of it I put in alcohol. So you can see it down there. I tinctured it before and used the tincture as medicine, but I'd actually read that, you know, a lot of people will preserve it this way. Same with ginger and other roots that then you can just take the root out and use it in cooking and when it's cooked it helps get rid of the alcohol. So we'll see. So we've got a little container of this and we've got some in the freezer. And I do have a recipe, I think it was episode six episode four. I'll link to it and I have a recipe for my favorite turmeric golden milk, golden spiced milk is what it's called. It's a really simple drink that's filling and nourishing and really helps you sleep. I know there's a lot of people who will take turmeric golden milk before they go to bed to help them have a nice night's sleep. So I'll link to that in case you guys want to see it. So the last thing I wanted to chat with you guys about but certainly not the least, is a really cool experience that I had this past weekend. So some of you know that I use Ginkgo with eco printing. It does not make much of a color in the print, but it makes a really nice resist. So if I use it and then put some color on top, I'll get this really beautiful resist of a Ginkgo leaf. And they're really cool looking. They, they look like a fan. If you've never seen Ginkgo, um, well, you'll see it here soon because I'm going to put in a video, but you should look it up. It's a really, really neat tree. It is one of the oldest, I think the oldest plant that is still surviving. Um, there, there are, there's fossil evidence of ginkgos from 270 million years ago. So the ginkgo trees were around in the time of the dinosaurs. At some point, it's believed that the trees were in many places over the earth. And then through um, different ice ages and stuff, they ended up dying back to, I believe, just a small area of China. And over time, have been distributed from there because the Chinese would use them medicinally. And so the ginkgos got more popular. They're also really beautiful and hardy trees, so people would want them in other areas of the world. Now we have them, you know, I have two little ones, little bitty ones in my yard, and um, there are a bunch in and around Asheville. There's one in Asheville that I know of that's over 100 years old. They can grow very tall depending on the variety. Some of them in China are said to be over 150 feet tall. Usually it's not much more than 100, 120, but they're still tall trees. Aside from using them for eco printing, they're also a really nice medicine. The way that I've learned of them is, depending on when you harvest them, you can harvest them right before they turn yellow in the fall or when they are yellow. They can be used for inflammation, for increasing blood flow. They're supposed to be good for memory, which they think is because it helps to open up the blood vessels and increase the blood flow to the brain. Um, so it's not something you would take if you are already on blood thinners or blood medication. But for, you know, a, a daily tonic for people who don't have medical conditions, it might actually help to increase blood flow to the brain. And, and they're actually looking into the link between using ginkgo and decreasing the risk of dementia because of helping, helping to keep the, the brain healthy. I had been out last month collecting some green leaves that I had found on the ground in the city, in this little neighborhood. Um, and a woman walked past and she, was, she had been just out for a morning walk and she started talking to me about the tree. It turns out the tree was on the edge of her property because it, it goes over a sidewalk. 
and she was heading inside and we just started chatting about it. Turns, turns out she likes creating her own fabric using cyanotype where um, she makes basically resist prints of things and we just hit it off and she said well the leaves usually fall all in one day I'll call you I'll text you when that happens. And apparently, I knew that usually they fall pretty quickly, but the way she talks about it for this, for this tree, and now I've noticed for all the trees in town, usually around the second frost, the second time it dips below zero for a nice cold, hard frost at night, the next morning when the sun hits the tip of the ginkgo tree, when it hits the top, as the sun's coming up, the tree kind of starts to shake and shiver, and all the leaves fall within a couple of hours. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing to see. And since then, I've noticed it actually happened with my figs too, because when I came home that day, I noticed the day before my figs didn't ha ha were completely full of leaves, and the next day they were, were all gone. But what happened was, this past Sunday morning, I got a text at about 8 or 8.30, and she said, the leaves are falling. That's all it said. So I hopped in the car and I zoomed over there and I brought my camera and here's what happened. <laughs> oh my God. So it was, it was just an amazing experience. Um, I was the only one, well, she came out, my friend came out for a little while to hang out with me and talk, but basically I was the only one there just dancing around in the leaves. I sat down and just let them fall on me for about 30 minutes, and it was like I was the only one getting rained on and everywhere else around, it was dry, but they just kept falling. It was. Uh, it just felt magical. It felt like I was a part of this little tree's life. It, it was a, um, a major day in the year of this tree's life, and I was sitting there enjoying the leaves falling. And yeah, it was, it was beautiful. And I hope I get to do it again next year. I have two small trees on my property. One of them I just planted this year. That's a variety that's supposed to grow kind of like one of those really short Japanese maples. It grows up and out and doesn't get more than about five or six feet. So I'm excited to see how that one grows. The other one was given to me about 17 years ago and it was about this tall. And in the next, it stayed in a pot for a few years because I didn't have a place, a home to put it in. And then I moved a few times and then I moved again and when we finally got to this land 15 years ago, I planted it on the far side of the property and over the next three or four years it got hit by a truck, it got hit a couple of times by a lawnmower, like it was never, I put a chicken wire around it, everything to try and protect it and it kept getting whacked back. And every year I would think, poor thing, it's not going to come back and it would come back. And so I finally ended up moving it two years ago to a spot that I was like, nobody's going to touch it here. This is a good place for it to be. It'll get enough sun. And it starts growing, does really well, gets to about two, three feet tall. And then someone hit it with a weed whacker.
um, and wrapped it around the base of the tree and tore the bark off. So the whole thing died. And I thought, that's it, this poor little tree. I've tried so hard to help it grow. At this point, it should be 20 or 30 feet tall because they grow fast. And I thought, you know, it's, it's gonna die this time. I ended up taking some rebar, so some really thick metal stakes and putting it all around the tree and just hoping that it would come back. And it did again this year, but this time instead of one, it came back with three, <laughs> three shoots. So now it's gonna be an even wider tree. And I'm just hoping that it will come back, but it, it just speaks to the perseverance of this little tree and the reason why ginkgos have lasted for 270 million years because I, the, the roots must go deep and they just keep on coming. I think I read that they grow anywhere from zone three to zone eight. So it's a pretty wide range and they do fairly well in cold weather. So if you're interested, you should look into them because they're really cool trees. I did take a bunch of leaves home. A lot of them are being pressed so that I can eco print with them. And then I made a tincture. So this is, I put the leaves in a blender with alcohol. This one I did, it's one to four, meaning for every one gram of leaf, I put four milliliters of alcohol. And it's not the strongest tincture, but that's about the most I could do with if I wanted to cover them with a fluid. And I used 50%, uh, well, I used grain alcohol and added some water to make it 50%. So I'll probably let this sit for a month at least, and then I'll squeeze it out and I'll have a nice ginkgo tincture. So I think, I think that's it. And now the rain's finally stopped so you guys can hear me. I hope there wasn't a lot of thumping during the, the video. Um, oh, there's one other thing. I wanted to thank everyone who ordered the apple cider donut tea. I sent off almost 60 packages of that tea. I can't believe how many of you still wanted it after I even gave the, the recipe out. But there's a few left in the shop. Cat hair. There are uh, herbal apple cider donut tea and a black to apple cider donut tea. So black so that there's some with caffeine. One thing I did notice though, after everything was sent off, I gave my husband a package of the black apple cider donut tea because he wanted to try it because he'd only had the herbal. <clears throat> and he said, there's a misspelling. And I was like, no, there's not. Cause he always does that to me, like to make me worried. I was like, no, there's not. I checked it over. He's like, no, there is. You misspelled donut. And I did. And here's what happened. Isabella the cat likes to sit on my computer because it's warm. I will usually try to make sure that I close it so that she only sits on the top, but occasionally I forget and I'm in the middle of typing something, I get up to get a drink or whatever and she sits on the computer. Well, she did that while I was making these labels and I went through and deleted all the things that she'd stepped on and I missed one thing. And apparently, now all of you are going to receive apple cider dope nut tea because all the labels were made and all of the packages were sent out. And I think she did this even before I sent off the first, the first batch. So it's a one of a kind because I probably won't make dope nut tea again. So I hope you enjoy it. The taste is the same. Anyway, I think that's it. I hope you guys have an amazing couple of weeks. I will see you guys soon. And maybe this next time I will have a video of the of the rehab, we'll see. I'm not sure if we're gonna be ready yet. We've still got some windows to put in and a few other things to do, but once everything is done, I'll smash that all together and make a good mashup of the, the rehab of the cabin. Have a great couple of weeks. Enjoy your winter weather if you are starting to get it. Enjoy your summer weather if it's warming up where you are. I think you guys are awesome. Talk to you later. Bye. If that mockingbird won't sing, Papa's in my window.